suit. But what suit do I need? How should it fit? I know nothing! So, you need a suit, eh? Yeah, I got a commemoration during the night, and I know absolutely zero about suits. And I need one. Don't worry. I got you covered. <laughs> hey, I'm Levi Peters, and this is Demetrius Levi. And today, it's all about suits. Personally, I think every guy needs at least one suit in his wardrobe. And just for a clarification, a suit is a matching jacket with matching pants. I just really can't think of anyone who could go their entire life without needing to wear a suit at least a few times. Weddings, yes. Funerals, a must, in my opinion. Many places or events require them. And even if it's not required, it shows a lot of respect. And this is, I think, really needed at places like a funeral. That's the last place you want to show any disrespect. It's all about the respect. So I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about a suit so you can feel confident when you go and grab one and you don't feel lost. Let's start with the question that everyone asks. What color suit should I get? Most style gurus will tell you about the two most versatile colors, navy and charcoal gray. And because they're dark, they go with nearly everything. They're some of the most versatile suits you'll have in your wardrobe. And colorful suits, I love them. They're great. But the thing is, you have to be very careful because they're harder to match, so I definitely don't recommend these for your first suit. And a big problem is they can be very, very tacky. And you don't want that at all. You don't want to look like Harry and Lloyd. Ah! Gray will apparently make you seem a little older and navy a little younger. Why? I have no idea. I don't know any of the science behind it, but apparently it does. If anything, navy is slightly more popular here in the US, so it's hard to go wrong. Now you might remember that I said most style gurus and not my personal opinion. Now I thought long and hard about this, and I know I'm going against the grain in a lot of ways, but I think your best option is black. Now hear me out. I can explain. Some of us may not have an office job or go to an event where a business suit is required, but all of us pretty much attend a funeral at least one time in our lives, not including ours. A suit is necessary, I believe, to show respect. And what is the color of mourning? Black. So you should be wearing black at a funeral. It's not the appropriate time to show off your style and wear interesting colors or have crazy pocket squares. Someone died. He's already dead. I never really look down at people who don't dress super nice or anything like that because generally I don't care. But when it comes to a funeral, I don't know, it just really grinds my gears. I just think, really dude, you couldn't wear black? I don't know, I just think that more respect should be given to the deceased. I don't get no respect. On top of funerals, from my own personal experience, the only time I was required to wear suits for work or an event were black suits. So already on my short time here on this planet, the only places I needed a suit required a black suit. And if I didn't have them, phew. now, Black is overrated, highly overrated and overused for the wrong occasions. But even outside of required work or funeral, you can make a black suit stand out from the sea of many black suits. We'll go over the ways that you can do that later here, but also just look at Tom Ford. Incredible. So in conclusion, the color, it really just depends on your lifestyle, but I wouldn't totally throw black out of the picture for the reasons I just described. Now there is one aspect that, to me, gives almost all the personality to a suit, and those are the lapels. Lapels, if you didn't know already, are these folds of fabric right here, and they can make or break a suit. In a nutshell, you basically have three different types of lapels, notch, peak, and shawl. There are technically more types that look similar to one of these three, but really most of them are just names for certain variation of a particular style. The notch lapel is your most basic lapel. This is the standard variety and the most conservative, but it's also the least formal. Most suits you'll see, other than double-breasted, will have a notch lapel. This is the norm and it's really hard to go wrong with this option. The peak lapel is this one right here, where the point comes to a peak like that, like a little mountain. It's traditionally more formal than the notch lapel, and this is personally by far my favorite of the three. The peak lapel just makes a suit stand out, and not only because it's less common, but the more aggressive shape gives the wearer a more confident look. I actually thought they were kind of strange and odd when I first saw them. I wasn't really into them. I didn't know what to think of them. But then after a while, 
I started to like him more and more and more and more and until it became pretty much an infatuation, really. Infatuation. That's what I meant. I know someone out there is going to, like, hammer me for my pronunciation. My mom and brother. Hey. Personally, I love them so much, that could be all I could wear for the rest of my life and I'd be extremely happy. If it doesn't have a peak lapel, I am not interested and I probably won't get it. The third type is the shawl lapel. This lapel has no cuts or notches or anything in it whatsoever. It's just smooth all the way down. It's the most formal of the three and it's usually reserved for tuxedos. When it comes to your first suit, it's usually recommended to go with a notch lapel. But if you wanna go for a peak lapel, absolutely go for it. I don't see any situation where it'd be improper to sport one. I'd personally stay away from shawl lapels for your first suit and for most of your suits for that matter. Personally, I think they just look best on a tuxedo and that's about it. Now for the width of the lapel. Normal width can be anywhere between two and a half to three and a half inches wide, depending on your build. And you can never go wrong with this. It's always gonna be a good choice. It will always look fine, yeah, but it may look a little boring also. But if you're going for something more understated, then you can never go wrong and that's what I would recommend. This is probably your best bet for your first suit. Skinny lapels are fashionable right now, they're kind of in, but personally, I can't stand them. The lapels are what give a suit the most flair and the most character. So when they're so skinny, you can barely see them and all that character is gone, it's flushed down the toilet. Any other differences in the lapels, like notch or peak, get lost when they're super skinny. Also, since skinny lapels are essentially a fad, they tend to look kind of cheap. You may have paid good money for it, but it can still come across as cheap. But that's just my opinion. Like I said, if you want to go for skinny lapels, go for it. I just don't recommend them. Wide lapels are personally my favorite. Sometimes I have a tendency to go overboard in how wide I actually like them, so I always have to keep that in check. You'll usually see wider lapels in Italian suits or a lot of bespoke suits. It's definitely not for everyone, but ooh, they show so much character and I love them. Ooh, and they're wide, it's just ooh. It's kind of got that 70s flair to them, that Tom Ford-esque feel. I feel it can be appropriate for your first suit to have wide lapels, but just not too wide, because remember, it's all about proportion. Now, some will say to always stick with the normal width lapel because it's timeless and it's classic. But here's the thing, it'll always look good, yeah, it'll always be around, but it usually never looks interesting. It's a way to play it safe, but to be honest, it can be a bit boring. But some people will say, oh, well, you know, you don't want to look down the road at those pictures and, you know, be embarrassed. But who cares? <laughs> They're just pictures. That's it. Who cares? If you like it and it looks good, then go for it. I'm just so sick of these people who are worried about how they'll look down the road when it's in the past, when it's all said and done. Don't worry about how you'll look in 20 years from now. Worry about now. You're wearing it now. And timeless isn't a thing anyhow. You'll still look dated, even if you play it safe. Nobody's going to care now, and nobody's going to care when you show your grandkids your old pics. They're not gonna say, oh wow, gee grandpa, look at you. You look so timeless and classic, unlike those other plebs. <laughs> Come on. People will still know what era it was, because suits in the 40s look very different than suits do today, as in every single freaking decade. So no, it's not timeless, and who gives a rat's boot about old pictures? And if it looks funny, at least you'll have a laugh. <laughs> Sorry, I ran over. <laughs> Another aspect to consider are the pockets, and you basically have three types of pockets. You got the patch, the flap, and the jetted. Patch pockets are the most casual, and they look really great on blazers and sport coats. Flat pockets are a great middle ground because they're not super casual, but they're not super formal either. They're perfectly in the middle. You can also have this extra pocket right here called a ticket pocket. Back in the day, it was used mainly for when dudes, you know, would have tickets for trains or whatever. They can also be straight or on a slant. You can also fold them inside to make them into the most formal pocket, the jetted pocket. Well, that's where I'm gonna end it. But don't worry, don't worry, there'll be more. There's just way too much to cover on everything that you need to know about suits in just one video. So I'm gonna divide this into two. This is part one, there'll be part two. Don't worry. 
And if you like this video, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And also hit the bell notification button so you'll actually get notifications when the next video is posted. This is also part of my sales beginner course, which you can view right here from the beginning if you haven't already. Because if you haven't, go do that. Also, before I leave, guys, comment down below if you think a black suit is a good idea for a first suit. Since it's such a heavily debated topic, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it and what you think about it. Because as you all know, we are in this together. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Look out for part two. Okay, I didn't think I'd have to do that. No, my brother's out there. Sorry.